last time was pretty, I would say it was pretty eventful. You need to log into World 20. Um, this was $60. Is what it looks like. So I don't know. That's a good one. This is, uh, this is the one that um, Zach revealed, uh, Brondier revealed himself to everyone. As That's right. Being Brondier. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yes, yeah, so amidst much drunken revelry, yes. Yes. That's right. Mm, I, uh, I remember that. And then, let's see, there was a, there was a winter fest, and there was lots of celebration. Yes. I would say that Chella and Brondier played more of a role in this the last episode. I mean, to be fair, the, the session before that, it kind of ended on their notes, too. So I, I feel like mm -hmm. it kind of made sense. Mm -hmm. We picked up with Chella as well. Oh, yeah, right. Um, you got to see this guy. Oh, that's yeah, right. Sweet. That's right. So, Chella, you found out a lot about the Wind Temple. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, we found out where it was, at least. Well, a lot more than and we that, before. And that the Earth Cobra um, druids are trying to resolve the problem on their own. And then we decided that we're going to go to the house outside of town and try to take care of the the problem of spirits they're having. Oh, that's right. Well, you got yourself a double whammy, right? Malchi like they've tried to deal with the house in the past, like burning it and stuff, but nothing would work because it's haunted. And then you have cultists who've rolled in there. So. so we'll have ghosts and cultists. Say that again. We'll have ghosts and cultists. Yes. Fun times. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that was that was the the big point, yes. But I tried to spy in on um... <laughs> You did try to do that. That was very weird, yes. Yeah, I was going to try to listen in on it, but did not do it successfully. No. Yeah. I did um, get a uh, weird script that said from Sid, which was very confusing. But right, Lord Ed was yeah. also confused. <laughs> That's true. I do remember that. Yes. So let's see. I will show the picture of the Lord. There we are. Yes, devilishly good looking. Yes. Brian here, what was kind of the the brief on the the family history there? Your your lover is no longer around. So pretty much it's been eighty years since Brondier has been to uh, Amadeus right. and um, uh, he and uh, Nadia which is Edwin's I guess aunt um, great aunt great yeah, yeah and uh, uh, like had a love interest but was never formalized because mostly because uh, Brondier was not openly uh, noble and also they were well, he was a dwarf community. so expecting Nadia to have died um, whenever she he came back found out that she's not dead and she's actually gone to the witch and exchanged mm -hmm. her age for her memory and so she is living somewhere oh and she's a dwarf now apparently and they think she's in Durin. Yeah. And I wrote, oh, right. 
this game if she's the one that y'all made me wrestle. <laughs> I, 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 I won't admit. Like, I, I won't play. Like, that's it. Honestly, <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, hold on. My dad's gone. Um, I need to I need to refresh my camera anyway. Let's see. Hello? Um... What's good at now? Um, yeah, I, so I don't know. Do you think we should just bid in increments? She was on here showing a character sheet as like a read only. Oh, yeah, you might have been trying to put them in here. Yeah, I was trying to manage my spells. Mm, nice. Prep it out a couple that might be better. I'll need to take a long rest. That's probably coming soon. Liz? Sorry, I'm trying to buy a car off of a government surplus store. It's an old um, police, well, park security, um, like Ford hybrid that's right now listed at $3,300. And, oh. and so it, it's like, I went and saw, and it's got all its maintenance done with the city of Fayetteville, like oil changes, services and everything. And so I went and talked to the guys over there. And so it's a good sound car. The hybrid battery was replaced two years ago. The brakes were replaced last year. And that's half the cost of the hybrid car in itself. Because yeah. hybrid, hybrid brakes charge the battery, so it's not like a normal brake change. So anyway, um trying to dad's dad has the account on GovDeals, which is this website that it's on. And um so we're trying to get in and it ends in refresh nineteen minutes and forty four seconds. What kind so, of car is it? Uh, it's the Ford Hybrid. It's in the uh, chat right here. I don't know if you can see what I posted earlier, but oh, I do see that. Gov deals. Nice. It comes with a light rack too. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> but it's it'll be the perfect in between car in between. Oh, that's my reminder to check on it. Um, um, in between trying to get debt free and get a new car, so it's like the perfect in between car. But yeah, true that. It's more reliable to buy from this than it is from a car dealer because I they know the person who put that ninety two thousand miles on it or whatever. I think his name huh. is I don't remember his name, but he was an old retired cop and just the nice. steering and the side bar is all worn out because he's just he'd always drive around with his arm out the window. But it was just pretty driving oh, from park to park. It wasn't driven hard. Anyway, so that's that's where my head will be for this. But anyway, um, so finds out that um, Maggie's now a dwarf and and you're in, apparently, and so there is the question of how she got to the witch in the first place and didn't like out like what well in in return importantly like she did something with her son where like he i can't remember exactly what happened she traded well, his on her son she's she ended up taking with her um wolfsbane which was the family uh the the, the, the dynastic weapon for the oh she, she traded in the weapon for the well for the... she took it took but it, yeah. you don't she don't like yeah. yeah, she stole it. Um, and then the words that I heard from Zanaris was, his son will live a charmed life. He has the mark of a witch. Right. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I hate it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
like pay a visit to the witch to see what's up with that and the failing will like that anyway although she wants to kill the witch but maybe, maybe. maybe. conversation because Rhonda hasn't shared this with y'all yet right I don't think so no. no no one knows so he'll reveal that and then I won't play out the story from here but yeah so that's the background um for that I think that's really where we I don't remember what happened after that I know before I think uh, Ephelion met with the local temple priestess. Um, right. Not a lot really major came out of that, other than just confirming what you guys were already knew. Um, yes. Yep. <laughs> Precisely. That's okay. We that we all know that we've been wanting to. Even if our characters haven't wanted to, we have all wanted to. Of course. Just like how I'm sure you're going to end up finding your way to the witch eventually as well. Yes. All right. So All right. I'm trying to remember exactly the time of day. I guess it's in the morning. We, I believe we ended um, chronologically right after Brondir got back from his meeting with Lord Ed. Which was pretty much bright early in the morning. You and Ed shared a bre shared breakfast. Um, so you've returned back to the, the Windy Goose. Nice. Uh, I assume everyone's also having dinner and eating, or breakfast, I mean. Um, maybe Ophelian's cooking up more raw boar meat. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Um, wait, <clears throat> as you guys, I, I assume you guys are going to be enjoying breakfast and such. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, safe to say. Okay. Well, as you guys are, and, uh, I don't know, Brondir, is there anything you would like to say or do? I mean, besides just fill them in on, you know, the basics of the situation. So do we have, the, sorry, do we have the plan set right now for going to the, um, uh, the woods or the swamp to the house? Well, we're going, you're going to the manor. Yes. But we've already made that established. I think, I believe that was established in the last Episode. And we're going with the tieflings, right? Dahlia, Titus, and Liam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Correct. Uh, also, another point is that Lord Ed was going to try and reach out to the Arakokra in the Wind Temple to kind of get an update right. on their situation. And um, you do know that roughly what happened is... Uh, the the entity that has been kind of running around and corrupting and messing with the temples has also uh, gotten to one of the what are known as the masters of the wind temple, one of the master Arakokra. And he did something to him or said something to him and it's had consequences within the wind temple and the other Arakokra are trying to deal with it. And so, last session, Brondir explained that what he learned from Zanaris, right. and that he would be hearing back from Arakokra, and then that's whenever Chella explained her side of it as well. Ah, yes. She yeah. shared Bertrand's dream, or her dream with Bertrand. Um, well, and, and with uh, Ulick. And the, wind, and the Wind Temple information as well. And so, because Ulick seemed like he wasn't really interested in Chella's health. And, but it seems that like through Zanaris, we might have a chance to help and get there. Yes. So it's been the following day. Um, I'm going to say, um, um, before we head out, 
I'd like to send word to Zanaris to see if we've heard back from the Wind Temple. If not, then maybe we can check in. Uh, well, it has it hasn't a day hasn't passed yet. Oh, I thought it was breakfast time. Well, it's it's the same day. It's the same day. Did I go in? Oh, so I went in the morning. That's right. And you came back. Uh, right. It's, it's, it's that same morning. You've just got back. Three weeks, Drew. <laughs> I apologize. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> I will say. So. Italian, I know your interest with the witch. Um, I now have an interest myself. I don't know what your motives are, but um, I would appreciate it if we do see her, that we don't extinguish her immediately. She has something of very, very high value to me. And I think, I think she would... I think she'd let me talk with her. So, guys, when we go to the swamp today, I'm not exactly sure how far in her residence is, but if we do make ourselves that way, and if we don't, that's fine. But I'll be making a trip there one way or another at some point. Um, so just keep that in mind if she happens to appear like an Enderman in the night. It'd be cool. <laughs> I definitely think so. It's, since she's on her own, and it doesn't seem like, although I don't have very many good things to say about her, especially after the information I received, it's, I don't think she'd be the one behind this. So, Maybe there's there is you're right. There's there's definitely something we can pull out of her. Right. <laughs> right. Of course the house the house is absolutely first when simple. Hopefully we'll hear back from the Aarakocra late this afternoon, early tomorrow. Because it sounds like, according to Chella, we're not very, we're not exactly be welcome with open doors, nor do I know how we would get up there. So I don't know if, uh, Chella, bless you and your landings. I don't know if you want all three of us on your back. <laughs> <That's the thing. laughs> well, <laughs> Rondor looks how stout he is. It's like, yeah, only much practice. <laughs> and that is not a slide against you in any way. Um, yeah, and I think that's all that, that okay. needed. Okay. Well, as you guys are kind of talking and eating amongst yourselves, um, you're mm -hmm. going to be joined yeah. by the gang. Yes. Uh, Dahlia is going to be leading um, with Titus and Leo uh, in tow behind her. And she is going to go straight to Brondir and your, you guys' table. And she's going to say, uh, all right, as soon as uh, you're through with breakfast, we'll, uh, we'll head off to the manor. Uh, I've arranged for uh, horses. For all of us to be to for to ride out. And little Sebastian. She's kind get of get on a proper horse, you know. Are you saying that in character, Gareth? I was just <laughs> I was just like humming like underneath my breath, like little Sebastian. Okay. Like, <laughs> I felt like in memory of them. Yes, right. Have you? I do as well. Ready to yeah. roll, boys. Yeah. I'd say Dahlia would smile at, at their failure and like getting ready already, like already, you know, preparing, getting all her stuff together. All right, it's good to see that. 
do you have any information about the kinds of abominations we are bound to find in, in the house? Oh, this is in there, my bad. Do what? <laughs> that was a little like Michael Caine Cockney creeping in there. I was watching Batman last night. Sorry, guys. Look, there's nothing, there's nothing. Fine. There is nothing wrong with Michael Caine. <laughs> anything, anything we might find in there. <laughs> anything we might find in there, Master Wayne. Ma Master Wayne. Oh, Master Wayne. Michael Caine. Master <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> oh. Dahlia is going to say, um, well, uh, the times that we have been there, at least in terms of, I guess you could say, ghostly activity, um, there have been there have been a few different types of ghosts that have been found. Most are not hostile. However, the area has a weird uh, ringing to it. It's it's like a, a hard to how to describe this. It's like a maybe a humming sound. I'm not sure. I've tried looking back in the past, in the far past, and the most that I could find, dig up on it is um, it was once a gathering, it was once a place of belonging to a powerful family of druids that have long since the house is long since gone all i know is that they were known for music in particular hmm. that is possible um I do know that there was some sort of event that occurred in the past that caused a tragedy or for the house to be become vacant, but beyond that, I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, the records are they were practically falling apart in my hands when I did find them. So I assume we don't have any idea what the inside of the house looks like. Well, we've been inside. A few have. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you a picture of the manor, I guess. That might be easier than me trying to explain everything verbally. Bring it. Yes. Hold on. Ooh. Oh, oh that's fine. I said AF. I mean, it has to be obvious, right? <laughs> Guy Fieri's like, I don't know, it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> it looks okay. Um, what I have, what I do know is that uh, I know more about the cultists. That, mm. that may have taken up residence. Malphite. Yes. Um, I think they were, or maybe they, uh, it's very strange. They, as far as I know, they're, 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 they call their leader the, the devourer. Hmm. Oh. Um, I'm not entirely sure of why that's the case, but I do know that this particular little group of Malkites are, or were known at least, for grave robbing. Oh, shoot. Shella spits on the ground. Yeah. In disgust. I, mm -hmm. yes, that would be my guess, though I've never heard of anyone named, that, that called themselves the Devourer, but the implications seem a bit, uh, she kind of cringes a bit at the thought. Sorry, I just muted myself for a second because yeah. um, the baggie was going to be loud. 
Um, so I, I look over and say, do you anticipate a lot of undead? Well, it's very possible. I mean, that's a very, as, as Ophelian said, it's very common for Malkites to be necromancers. Mm. <clears throat> Have there been any grave robbings recently that you know of? Not in the local area, at least. At least not in the immediate in the immediate town of Abdeos, but in the towns further north, yes. Okay. Hmm. One minute and thirty seconds till the auction ends. Is a high bidder just practically refreshing. <laughs> I'm looking if I have any spells that help me against undead <laughs> to prepare. Mm. Mm -hmm. The only thing that really sticks out about this, from the from the intel I've managed to gather here, um, they these cultists, I don't know if they're necessarily the typical kind of necromancers or not, because I've heard that they've managed to either command or control spirits themselves. Hmm. I like take some piece piece of fabric and like stuff it in my ears and just say like well hopefully whatever noise they're making it doesn't like it doesn't hurt me. <laughs> yes. Well, if you are all ready to go, I figure we might as well get traveling. All right. No time like the present. Hmm. Let's do it. I'm excited for some sweet necromancer action. Leo and Titus are both kind of fidgety and nervous as you guys are setting off. Um, but yeah, everyone's going to have their own horses. I I don't know about Brondier, though. Maybe maybe a donkey would suit you better. I'm not sure. Is that a short joke? No. Nah, I can make it on a horse. It'll be fine. Um, yeah. I am noble, by the way. Well, true. I'm trained, I'm trained in all things. It's very fancy. <laughs> sure. Think Just thinking of considerations here. Yeah. Um, Right. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an even better point. Um, is that I literally lived in a human world for the majority of my life. I, I probably have some kind of uh, hack where I can shorten the stirrup or something. Yeah. Well, so this is a short thing. Yeah. What yeah. about Gerbo? I mean, he's even shorter than I am by like a foot. I no. use my heels and jump up. I guess that's true. It's either that or you're going to have to get thrown up onto the saddle. Mm -hmm. I don't think Tell is particularly graceful. I don't think that riding horses is part of druid life. Yeah, you're going gonna, you're gonna to be awkward for you, yeah. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, I, I am skilled in animal handling, but not horseback riding. Mm. Hopefully we're not but trying to walk. But at the very least you can you can keep the horse from bucking you off and stuff, probably. Mm -hmm. I think and I'm not gonna make you roll animal handling where you immediately crit fail, at least. Thank you. Because <laughs> that's be happened in the past with those Sebastians. Mm -hmm. They weren't very fun. They were not very fun. No. Mm -hmm. Drew, I think you uh, need to repeat your camera. I, yeah, that, that, I do. Um, Kella's going to walk up alongside um, Leo. Saying, you have very much combat experience. Oh, um, yes. Um, Titus and I, we've, uh, 
we've had our f f fair share of, uh, of experience. <clears throat> we come from very far north, you see. He kind of, and again, he's kind of fidgety, starts kind of looking off towards the north. You just look a bit nervous. Wasn't sure if you had the pre-battle jitters. Well, <clears throat> yes, it's... Let's just say we traveled with a larger group of companions in the past, and and things didn't quite work out so well for us. And, well, to be quite honest, I, there are other reasons to be on edge. Such as? Anything beyond cultists, not quite cultists, who are conjuring dead spirits, a witch in the swamp who can alter reality at the drop of a hat, and rogue druids who are causing windstorms? <laughs> he kind of nervously laughs. I suppose you have a lot of good points. Um, well, a lot of the... He kind of lowers his voice and actually whispers to you, Chella. It says, uh, Several of the tieflings in the commune that we are living in have decided to leave and head north. Chella looks at him in, in surprise. Back to the Badlands. It's war torn. What could possibly be there? Well, it's not what's there, it's... I was drawn there myself. Titus and I. I need to re... I need to reconnect real quick. Oh, okay. I think I got the car for... $3,550. Wow! That's crazy, y'all. That's great, Zach. That. That's so great. Okay. Congrats. That's Thank fun. You. Good. That's cool. It's $30 a gallon. It has a so brand new hybrid battery and a brand new brand new hybrid brakes that just charge the battery. Yes. And it's it's driven. Its full life was driven by a retired cop. I don't think you can get a better deal on that. And I get a free like light bar, so I can scare people in my neighborhood. Yes, <laughs> that's the cool. real. That's the real reason you got it. <laughs> Honestly, yes. That's exciting. Nice. Can you use it while it's in operation? If you're even yes. if you're not a police officer, absolutely you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, I'm wondering if this will keep me from getting pulled over. Mm -hmm. It might. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, I mean, it's that's too much power. I can probably put my National Guard tags on it, and then that'll help too. Anyway, yeah, that's oh, <laughs> oh, bluff one hundred. Hey, 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 man, Jesus one hundred one. Question for question, baby. I mean, that's right. <laughs> Question for question. That's it. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, the power of rhetoric. I don't know how um, to stand in court, but you can try. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. But oh, uh, wait, wait. Oh, did oh, a felony enrolled insight. Okay. Uh, what is she? Well. We, uh, my companions and I, the, the group we traveled with, um, they, well, they, for lack of a better word, they became monstrous. Mm. For us, for, for my kind, and, well, for any who are been cursed by the pact, we... And we're in the Badlands and exposed to certain magics. It, it transforms us, it makes us wild. And it was, it's, it's addictive. Mm. Um, 
Well, we encountered a, another group of adventurers in the Badlands, and well, Titus and I, we we thought better. We we are, I guess you could say, our our better side of ourselves won out, and we decided to flee. Oh, no. Uh, just... mm. no, they not quite like you. They they were there was a dwarf um human. Ah, an another tiefling. She was there too. Oh my gosh. Why go back now? Well, we try to warn them, but they're being called. It's in our dreams. Oh, that's so interesting. I think it is a powerful tiefling mage of some <clears throat> sort in the Badlands, perhaps in Shadowheart, that seeks to call us and call us together. I cannot imagine it would be for any good, though. As I said, Leo and Titus, or <laughs> Titus and I, we've, uh, we still feel the draw, but we have managed to resist it so far. Mm. Dolly is going to ride, uh, ride up. You get the feeling that they, at least Leo, is being genuine. In that he is, it seems as though he is truly trying to um, resist. He's resisting the urge, I guess you could say. Yeah. Has traveled basically as far south as he could. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> um, nice. Wow. But I mean, that's Makes that's sense. pretty fair, actually. Makes sense. That actually. It's pretty reasonable. Um, but um, mm. I I do hope that this isn't going to... Uh, Leo's still talking to you, Chella. Um, I, I do hope this doesn't affect your trust in us. I, as I said, we've really tried, and, and Dahlia has been an immense help to both of us. I have. It's been far easier for me to resist it, though. Well, I know what it is to be drawn back home by a sense of obligation and to feel a sense of duty to stay where you are. It will not affect my trust in you. Good. He'll breathe a big sigh of relief. <sighs> Good. <sighs> I, I will admit some days are harder than others, but I think I want to have a. I want to call this place home as much as Dahlia does. <clears throat> wow, love that. Riding along. You are riding. 
you are right. Yeah, all of this is happening while you were riding. Yes. What's the terrain like? What's the countryside like? The countryside is um, so you're going to be passing through uh, several. Uh, at first, you're going to be passing like it, as you're leaving Abdeos, you're going to be having or being or, bleh, tongue tied. Uh, you're going to uh, see several uh, fields of crops. Um, of varying types, a lot of wheat. There might even there were even a few uh, wetter rice fields, and even uh, further down, in about a few hours, you even see what appear to be cotton fields. Um, so a lot of farmland. Um, as you guys get closer, however, the hill, the hill, there's going to be. Uh, very low hilly terrain, um, a lot of grassland. Uh, as you got, and whenever you look and see to, let's see, going in that direction, you would be looking. I guess it would be towards your left. Generally, you would see what would be the swamp mm -hmm. um, in the distance. Uh, it would be. I need a perception check. Go ahead. What'd you do? I'd like to look for mushrooms. Okay. That's my thing. That that is that. <laughs> it's a gift. Shall I like side eyes him the whole time? <laughs> you don't know I'm looking for mushrooms. Well, are you gonna pull a mushroom out of the ground? It depends on if I see one or not. <laughs> so. Gerbo, as you guys are going along, um, you are there are going to be some like areas with tr like sparse tree cover, mm -hmm. and there's going to be some areas where you'll see like a fallen log, and um, mm -hmm. you you could find some 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 common mushrooms that are growing on it on okay. on one of these logs. I, do, do you wish I, to collect I, it? I think in the direction of the fallen log. And I say, Chella, that looks ripe for some mushrooms. Chella, Chella um, side eyes him, but goes to check it out. <laughs> okay. She isn't going to pass it up. <laughs> Can't pass it up. <laughs> Are you the food? <laughs> okay. So, Chella, you go and inspect this fallen log, rotting log. And uh, you do. There are some. I so there's there's some common mushrooms, but there's also a type of mushroom underneath the log. Well, a type of fungus, I should say, beneath the log that you find that's actually could be used in a poisonous compound. Ah. Nice. She uh she holds she kind of holds it up as she uh moves back to join the group. Like. <laughs> To put this mechanically, if you get other other certain other ingredients, you could you could make a vial of something. Ah, cool. Cool. Okay. Better inventory that shit. Yeah, I'm doing it. Make a note. <laughs> what is it? What should I call it? Poison. Um. You make up. Is there a mushroom name generator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, honestly. Not. Look it up, look it up. There he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> You're going to see Fungus names. Oh, my God. Fungus I names. Mean, Dear God, no. People are wild. Someone's been there. First two of your first name, the middle two letters of your first letters. First cap, panther top, bog, fog, lichen. Okay, you know what? We're calling it the devil's polypore. Oh, thank um, you. Oh, this is so good. You know, okay, as, a, as an aside, sometimes <laughs> I would love if we crafted like a potion poison like system for me to play with. As there, there are systems that Brett and I have tried to implement. Yeah, Brett has a system in place. Really? I'll, I'll have to kind of... Let's like talk about it sometime. We can do our own little thing and figure it out because that would be very fun to That's me. Cool. Yes. I always did potions on Skyrim. I was that girl. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Gathering all the ingredients. 
Definitely good taste. Good taste. I did that in Morrowind. I loved it. I got addicted to that. <laughs> oh, there's a little thing in, in, oh, it was so fun. So, <clears throat> Zach, you kind of missed yeah, some of the sorry, tiefling, the tieflings. Happening. I had to call my wife. So, yeah. Sure. Um, we bought a car. Um, yeah, I bought a car. Okay, so okay. Uh, Titus, Titus and Leo come from experience in battle. Brett said, if you went north, what made you turn back? And everything in between that and now is what I missed. So mm. there's that. Uh, the tieflings were with the other group of adventurers in the campaign. Yeah. And um, they were with our yeah. other former. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm. Ellerin and Ardea. Yeah. Well, yeah, those would be the only two I think that you guys would know. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then they said that they were being called north by a their dreams. Yeah, like there's a strong internal like pull temptation to migrate back to the Badlands, like mm -hmm. a racial pull. For everyone to unite up there. Wow. And they think that it's for some kind of nefarious purpose. Mm -hmm. But they are, but they, those two are resisting the urge. But ever all the other tieflings are planning to leave the town. Dahlia is resisting as well. Dahlia is resisting as well. But they feel that temptation even here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said they came as far south as they could to stay away from it, I guess. Wow. But all the other tieflings are going north to the Badlands. Well, many of them are. I wouldn't say all of them, but many of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so then we got on horses and found mushrooms, and that was pretty much it. Hey, don't run a mile. Whoa, hello. No, that's what you said. I'm just, I'm just saying. Listen, listen. You don't Whoa. minimize the importance of the devil's polypore. All right. Oh, we found a mushroom name generator. All right. Yes. Sorry. Oh. Convenient. <laughs> yes. Very nice. So is there anything else anyone would like to do? Because you guys are going to be traveling for, I would say, in total, it would be probably towards sundown by the time you guys get to the manor or to the outskirts of the manor. We're going to do uh -huh. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. So you do see a lot of just general foot traffic on this road that you guys are taking. Um, like, you haven't split off to the old beaten path that would take you to the manor yet, right? Like, you're taking a more traveled path. Uh, as you're taking that travel path, you do see a good deal of... Um, like I said before, foot traffic to and from Abdeos. Um, but you also do see uh, some tracks that catch your attention more than the others. And these tracks are not sticking to the road, but rather they appear to be kind of meandering off the road, into the trees, back onto the road, back into any like small, sp small you know, uh, grouping of trees, sometimes in, into bushes. Um, and now as you guys are turning off into, uh, or onto, you know, the, off the main road, in onto the this older pathway, um, you will see also that these tracks are also kind of sporadically going in that direction as well. Uh, 
Uh, I think that would be survival. That's the fun of D&D? Yes. So, as for their number, you can tell that they have anywhere between <clears throat> five and eight individuals. And what else? What other other questions did you have? They seem humanoid, as far as you can tell. Mm. You think it couldn't have been more than more than twenty four hours, so fairly fresh. <laughs> I got my my voice got bad. Tell us, Brondeard. Do do farmers and townspeople usually range this far out from the city? Not typically, unless they're traveling long distances. Um, but there are much safer paths to go than this direction. So I would say not. It would be questionable to see someone come out. Not necessarily uncommon, but it is kind of off the beaten path, so to say. Literally. My Drew. Do what? It's a fact check by the DM. Yeah, um, as you guys are like getting off the main road, like yeah, like you would expect more foot traffic. You would expect there to it'd be more well traveled, like you said. But going off onto this, you know, path towards the manor, it's definitely less traveled. It could also is less safe, like you said. You're starting to get into more. Um, not necessarily treacherous terrain, but you're getting closer to the swamps. You're, um, it's it's less safe, and there's not as much reason, good reason, really, to go in this direction. Right. Cool. That's how I felt instinctively. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Uh, I'll try and refresh again. Okay. <clears throat> now I don't have a camera. <laughs> you're like, Maybe so. You're like, it somehow is worse. Hmm, even worse. Um... <clears throat> right, so as you guys are getting closer, mm -hmm. or, like Dahlia is obviously going to tell you, okay, we're, we're starting to get close, like probably within an hour, you guys will be there. What's an hour on horseback? <clears throat> Now keep in mind you guys have been traveling all day. It's just you guys are now close to your destination. As you guys are getting close. Yeah, agreed. I will say as you guys are traveling, the terrain is going to become more hilly, uh, less even, and um, also there's going to be more tree cover. Uh, it's basically starting to thicken up. Like, it, like if you guys were to travel from your current destin, like your current location, and you guys went, say, probably in another four or five, like another four hours, you guys would probably be at the swamp proper. So, like, like the very edge of a forest. I'll I'll allow it to be classified as a forest for you. <laughs> nice. Cool. Um, so I would say that you guys are going to 
hitch your horses onto some tree, onto a couple of trees. Yeah. Off of uh, any kind, like kind of off the off of the the old rotted road that you guys have been taking. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the manor is within sight. It is situated on top of a large hill. And surrounding it, or not surrounding it, but um, some of the land, it looks like, uh, from the distance you guys can see, it looks as if it's uh, dedicated, like a dedicated cemetery. Nice. <clears throat> Ooh. Oh my, okay. What do you say? I speak Elvish. Yeah. Nice. Yes. I'm gonna do it. Chill. Yes. Chill. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. The horses, um, kind of, because you spoke in that, the, in in one of the, I guess we could say, ancient, more ancient tongues, closer to nature. It's like they kind of instinctively, you know, acquiesce to you um, more naturally. So yeah, they, they comply without really much of a fuss. Nice. So, I feel like that's a more, well, that might be a little more complex. Maybe that's, that might require some kind of check, maybe. Like, you know what I mean, right? Like, to kind of convey that to them. Yeah. Nice. Right. So, I, I think that would be... I guess it would be persuasion. Yeah. Yes. With this horse, many. Nice. Cool. Nice. Ephelion, very persuasive all of a sudden. I would say you're eating out of the palm of your hand, but that's a horse joke. That's, sorry. Yes, yes. Very, very much eating out of the palm of your hand. So, okay. So, yeah, you managed to get across that. Uh, you know, if they see in see or sense any danger nearby, that they will. Uh, I don't know what the signal would be. Um, <laughs> well, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna say they're gonna they're gonna shout for you. Hey, there's danger. Everyone else is gonna hear hear them neigh or whatever. But you'll hear you'll hear them. Now, to give you guys a perspective on like, like I said, the, you guys are on a larger hill with forest or tree cover, and downhill is where you're gonna kind of come out towards the manor, and then up again. Like you're get, it's like entering a valley. And coming up again up the hills where the manor is located with the cemetery around it. Just to kind of help give you a visual. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could just imagine if Felian's like, hey, could anything we wanna anything we wanna ask the trees? And Dahlia and Leo and Titus are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they can tell us how many bad people are in there. That'd be yeah. yeah. 
Hey, hey, Drew. Yeah. I've, I've been here before, right? You have. You've been out in this. You've been uh, at the manor, um, like in the outskirts and stuff. You've never really been inside it. Okay. But you have like been on the outskirts, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll say well, I don't know what information the tree can tell you, but it's just likely that be ready for anything because the limit, the speaking limitations of the tree, you know, it's it's going to speak in general terms anyway. So whether they have the type of magic or not, I say we just take take a very tactical approach. Um, been out here many times. It's been a long time, and though I've never been inside, um, it's not my first breach. So I think that we can uh, make this happen. Just everybody need to, you know, stay vigilant and uh, keep an eye out for each other because we're not really sure what's going to happen when we go inside. Dahlia, uh, we'll say, uh, well said. Um, I'm wondering if we might, it might be helpful to, I don't want this to say split up, but maybe Leo, Titus, and myself might be able to fan out a little more, try and get get, get some better reconnaissance before we decide. I think what. that's good, especially since we're familiar working with each other in that way, a p two parties of three. The only question I have is, do you have a healer or any potions to help you if you get down and we need to come, but we're busy? Um, she's going to say, uh, she'll, she'll kind of slap her hand against her bag and say, uh, well, each of us has our own potions. And Leo is a wizard. And he can, he could, he can get us out, get us out of the situation if it calls for it. So what do you say? You take the front, and we'll go in the back and try to meet in the middle, clear room by room until we meet at a central location, and then go up a floor. <clears throat> <laughs> I speak up and say. Well, since we've never worked with them before, might it make sense for at least one of them to be with each other so that we don't, um, well, I know this doesn't sound like I don't trust you, but maybe it would be better if at least one of you were with the group and then maybe I could go with two, the two tieflings. I think we've come this hmm. far with our tiefling comrades. We should have a bit more faith in them, Master Gerbo. Yes, I don't have I don't... on the tieflings front, but uh, it is an interesting. If, if there is a beneficial way to do that, as far as Gerbo, if you can provide something that they cannot, then which we all know that you have a very highly acclaimed thunder clap. Um, but um, so I pull out, I pull out my scroll of pedigree. <laughs> oh, 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 there it is. Maybe go to go with so long. your uh, cat nap. And just kind of uh, clear my throat. And just go. Oh, we're, all, cool. we're all more skilled at working within our respective groups. The four of us have fought several battles alongside each other. I'm sure the tieflings have trained together. Let's all just right. stay, in, let's stay in the groups we decided on first. I forget there's four. I'm looking at three windows right now of people talking. There's four people in them. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sorry. I'll let you go. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. But I I think I think that's wisest just to simply work with who we know. And Brondier, I believe that's very sound. We we can work from different directions. Hopefully, we can meet in the middle. If there are any issues, again. We will be able to send you a message, <clears throat> if that is the case. Send a message how? What, what do you mean by a message? She's going to point to Leo. And With Leo's going to say, I can, I can cast message. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I look at Chella and I say, that's cool. 
<laughs> and she's like, anyone can cast message. Everyone can cast message in my sleep. I'm just kidding. Can one of I look at our party. Can one of us cast a message or send some type of signal? Do we have a whistle? Do we have any yeah. distress? Yeah. I don't have it prepared, but I have that as a known spell. I suppose if it came down to it, um, we could also just send up a maybe a flaming arrow, something on fire as a signal, maybe smoke inside. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. like yes, that's true. Right. right. Uh, you have cast spell or something. Um, Athelian, is that you? Or is that Shella? Have what? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's something. And nice. I did. I did not have it prepared. So let's try to. I try not to mess with my spells once we're like in combat to have some integrity about yeah. it. So. So. And Talia is going to say, I'm a ranger. Leo's a wizard. Mm -hmm. Titus is a mercenary fighter. Nice. And you're barbarian. Another ranger. I don't know what you are, Master Gobo. <laughs> and and um, I, makes two of us. I sneak. I sneak behind. Behind them. Stealth roll. No, you use Misty Step. That's. No, I don't want to. I don't want to use Misty Step because I can only use it a certain amount of times. Oh, I guess just, just, man, just, just, yeah, roll stealth. I guess. No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Gross. So, okay, so I'm just imagining it's like it's like the meme of from the, from the Simpsons where you just kind of s like slide into a bush yeah. and come out another behind them. Yeah. <laughs> Homer Simpson. Yeah, no, Homer, yeah. Exactly. That's what I think. Oh, happening. well, that's what you are. Okay. Very good. <laughs> like, like Nightcrawler from X Men. Yeah. And. Mrs. Chella, you can, you are a magic, you're a mage of some sort. A druid. Hmm. Well, I think, I think we are. Diverse. We are, we are in a good position, I think. <clears throat> All right. I take off running. <laughs> <laughs> We roll. <laughs> you just run. I, just, <laughs> I do barbaric rage and tear off my shirt. <laughs> you just you just start screaming in rage as you charge through the woods. Do a bear, a bear roar. Pick up yeah. The <laughs> I pick up the manor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that sounds good to me. Do I have disadvantage on stealth if I'm in rage? No, but I guess if I'm in rage, I I, I don't think I've seen anything with that. Uh, Brett is I don't think that's yes, yeah, it would. You could take it off, yeah. Right, and that let me think of what that does to counter my AC. Then let me open that up. I need to also, I'm going to try and reconnect again. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And we're doing a group too, so typically. Yeah, there's so, a group chat. We'll yes. be fine. Yeah, if, okay. I need to, if I'm rolling stealth for the group or something, I'm fine. Well, it would be, ro everyone would be yeah. rolling. I would just, I would just be taking average basically. Mm. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right, so um, Dahlia and her gang are gonna go off into a to to an, into another direction. 
uh, basically trying to get another good angle in on the manor. You guys are... Uh, what direction are you going to approach from exactly? Like the fr a door, back door, front door, side? Right. That's cool. Um, so we have side door options. There are. There could be. Yes, you could enter through a side door potentially. Um, I will tell you guys that as you guys are approaching, you get a closer look at the manor. That you are going to see folks that are in the cemetery. Oh. You do see some people. Um. It looks as if. Uh, they appear to be digging. How? Yeah, uh, Garbo, get over there. <clears throat> I um approach and start hiding behind um tombstones. Okay, roll stealth. I realize you have pass without a trace and you're a rogue, but I, I have to. Yeah, okay. All right. Everyone so... crit sometimes. Now, keep in mind, Pass Without a Trace is a 30-foot radius away from a failure. So you have to stick with it to stick to her that close. Okay. You might yeah. not need it, but I'm just saying if you need the benefit, you can't go too far. And then I kind of like pop my head over the top of it and, and count how many people I see. Okay. Uh, where is it? Yep, here we go. Do we count? Do we have a map? It's okay if not. There, you count five of them. Five. Okay, cool. And I don't really have a map, <laughs> so. Fine. Are they and they're all at separate dig sites? Um, some of them are, like, there's a they're 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 relatively like they're close enough together. Okay. Where like. Something have something happened, the others would know. Cool. But they are like at different grave spots. Mm hmm Okay. I um I come back to the group and just tell them that th that there's five and that they're digging separate sites. Oh I'm sorry, I gave you false information. There's six. There's six. And that six. they're they're digging um a number of graves, but you know, it's Probably too risky to alert anybody to. They're all within sight of each other, so I couldn't do anything. Hmm. Is there a way that we can all? Let's see, five of them. Six of them. Six of them and seven of us. Is there a way that we can all have some sort of a surprise attack on them? Maybe even kill them without. Alerting anyone? Right. Are they, and I, I say, I ask Drew now, were they all around 30 feet from one another? Let me get the ruler out. Because if Ephelion was, if we the, had a cone of silence around them. The, and I, I haven't really moved the tokens since you've looked at them, but they are 25 feet. <laughs> <laughs> apart from each other. Nice. Okay. Maybe I can pick them off one by one while their backs towards each other. <laughs> well, they're they're all kind of looking at, like they're looking downward, right? And I will tell you that they're primarily focused on two particular grave sites, and so all of them are kind of preoccupied with that, like those mm -hmm. graves. If Got that it. makes sense. Like they're all looking downward, looking and digging and all that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll stealth. I, I, again, you'll probably be fine, but yeah, you're fine. <laughs> How many does it add? It adds 10? 10, yes. Okay, so I rolled a 34. Yeah, no, you, yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. Okay. When you when you cast detect evil and good, um, you sense there's there, there definitely yes th this area is it seems as though they are up to some desecration, like it seems as though they are exhuming bodies, and that's part of the desecration. Um, you do also detect. Uh, Something that you noticed is that all of them are undead. All of those, all of the people digging. Yes. Awesome. So, uh, this is <laughs> Though I will tell you, when you're close enough, you can actually look at them. They don't look like they're undead. No. Like not obviously so. We should have brought the dead with us. But dead. Dead. Genius. Don't we have a ring against necromancy that we got in the Redwoods? Oh no. Yeah. Nahid. Necrotic resistance. That was, that was Nahid. Nahid. Nahid had it. Oh, we all got it. I got one in my inventory. Let me see. I don't think oh. I oh, yeah. No, okay. Chilla doesn't have, have it. And if Felony doesn't have it, but we have one. I. So, okay, those rings. I th I'm pretty sure those rings. Hey, this um, is first game, first session. That was. I don't, I don't have one. He didn't have Well, no, no, no. Those rings. Okay, so first off, Jet. Well, Nikki got. She ended up getting a jet colored ring. Um, that gave her necrotic, like, protection, like, resistance against necrotic damage. Yeah. Everyone on the group mm -hmm. got rings to protect them from the necrotic aura that was deeper in the in the red woods when they were going to the tomb of Tristan. Ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Those rings, um, I suppose, would give you resistance. However, I did intend them for just to be plot points, plot plot items, if that makes sense. Didn't work out the mechanics there. If you want to take away all the gifts you give me, that's fine. I'll play that way. Do what? I think it ended up being destroyed. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. We didn't. We, there was never any. I would just. I think. I think her entire inventory was destroyed because she mm. exploded yeah. from lightning energy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was seeing everything that honor were consumed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then I would say, uh, I'm really, I'm really glad I didn't try to kill them. Tella spits on the ground, kind of like bares her teeth, with like disgust. Oh. She hates, she hates, she hates people that misuse the magic of life and death. Mm. It offends her in the most in the most supreme way. It's fair. <clears throat> so are there they're, they're all each digging an individual grave or there's multiple of them digging two separate graves? Multiple digging a couple of graves. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I'm about to lay out, get you guys on the map. Let's see if I can find. Oh, that'll help if we can see it. Characters, yeah. Um, so, how about uh, Dahlia? Your group takes on one, and then we take on the other. Uh, if if it's possible, and we can approach at the same time. If not that, we can all come upon a single group at the same time. Maybe put them in the grave and have them less mobile um, 
finish it there and then take on the next group. I don't know. Um, trying to think about keeping noise level as low as possible. And that, that means a fast kill and not being able to alert. Um, I was going to tell you that Dahlia and her group aren't close enough for you to talk to them directly. <laughs> they're they're approaching for a minute. Dahlia and her group are not there at all. Mm. Yeah. Well, they're 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 coming from a different angle, a different spot. Mm, I'm just looking at myself to see if there's anything that can help. All right, so I'm gonna. And the I'm path sorry. without a trace is specific to people. It's not like a cone. So I don't really have. I didn't really get a chance to really prepare the the map. So we've got this. This is what we're going with. This is what we're working with. Yeah, it's not very. Um, it doesn't have a lot of obstacles, really. And what's the time of day? Uh, it's sunset. So are the graves like right here and here? Yeah. Nice. I think I can pro at least provide some kind of a distraction. Might make it easier easier for us to take them out. Oh, good idea. Bring them out into the woods, maybe, where we can them off one by one. I'll bring them out. Hmm. Throw rocks. Huh? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> do, do the splinter cell throw a can? Yes. Yeah. In the Hitman, it's a coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, how do you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. That That's where I'm putting you right now, at least. Um, well then, heck, let's let's come at him from behind this first group, and um, I'll um, I'll come out from behind the top group, and maybe we can split into twos, um, and each of us, you know, pushes them into the hole. Shella um, looks at everyone and says, "Ready." And then she uh, looks to one of the nearest graves and casts oh, no. animate dead <laughs> <laughs> and bring and uh, summons up her own zombie corpse. Oh shit! Okay. I mean, okay. That's, like they've unearthed a bunch of graves. There's got to be like there's there are. Yeah, there's got to be like a corpse or a pile of bones or something around that this was on. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can find. Well, it's a great distraction. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> to Honestly. say the least. Fight fire with fire. Uh, yeah. What? What's this one? We didn't. Yeah, are you? Is he one of us, bro? <laughs> did you? Did you do that? Yeah, bro. Hey, Lawrence. Was that you? <laughs> Is that you, man? <laughs> nah, it wasn't me, bro. <laughs> it will. I'm just trying to find a token. And by the way, uh, the way that she's doing this, she has a fox skeleton that she scavenged in the woods on one of our previous episodes. Mm, you, she, yeah, you, she did. Yeah, she's like, um, she's like manipulating it like a puppet. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Like, like, um, Rainier. Nice. Yes. Okay, so here's here's what here's your zomb here's your Zambo. Okay, hi Zambo. Good Zambo, bad Zambo. Good Zambo, bad Zambo. And yes, yeah, it would be like a regular zombie, except there's some mushrooms growing out of it. <laughs> um, she has it um, start to shamble its way over to the group of three um, on the bottom. Yeah. So it approaches. And they're gonna like. At first, like they're not really gonna be that concerned about it. Like this guy, 
kind of puts down a shovel and looks at the undead. He's like, wait. Do they speak? Yeah. Oh, they speak common? Yeah. Hmm. This is interesting. This is a kind of a strange type of monstrosity. Um, Stella, hearing that, is going to do an arcana check to see, like, what's different about these mm. these dudes from, like, the typical... Because she knows undead, like, really well. And they... Yeah. They... Uh, like, walking yeah. dead, garbled, growling. Right. So... so Chella, when you cast our, an arc, that when, well, when you cast, when you make your arcana check, um, kind of looking at these, and I, you can kind of look at them. Let's say you can look at them somewhat through your, you have, you can sh somewhat share your zombie senses a little bit. Cool, I dig it, I dig it. And um, right. you can kind of see that. Their eyes are completely green, as in they don't have a typical iris or anything like that. Um, just green, glowing, coming out of their eyes, where they're normally their eye sockets would be. Uh, also, uh, based on your arcana check, uh, you think that this obviously isn't a normal, like, undead zombie like you said like they should be less coordinated and mm -hmm. not intelligent but you think there might be it's something to do with uh... you think it might be something known as insolvent um, as insolvent insolvent mm. So like not just raising the body without the mind, but like raising the body and putting a soul back into it, like a different soul back into it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, gross or, or spirit. Yeah. Tells like curses under her breath and tells the others what she thinks is happening with them. Um, so she's gonna have she's gonna have the zombie like not like come right into the middle of the group, but kind of like bypass the group and head towards like towards the house, like trying to lead them away. Okay, so towards the zombie's like right here, and this like this guy notice like kind of it's like hey hey, uh, he's gonna like get the others' attention. Who's still like got their shovels and stuff. It's like hey hey look. look. Look at that. And uh, he's gonna. It's not one of ours, is it? No, no, no. I'm gonna have the zombie like stop and uh, turn around to face to face him and like make a growl to try and alert the other group on the other side. It makes like a barking yeah. growl. What? So yeah, all of these guys also now have stopped digging and have kind of, their attention's been drawn. And again, they're like, hey, what's going on over there? <laughs> mm. uh, the zombie's going to turn around and start trudging back towards the house. Oh, so like, uh, this away? He's trying to, he's trying to lead, I'm trying to lead them as much as they'll, as much as they will. Towards the house. Away, oh, away. actually, it'd be smarter to bring him to us, wouldn't it? Well, it's up to you. Keep in mind, a, a zombie can go 20 feet unless you dash. <laughs> zombie dash. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Brandier's hasted. He's broken right now, so. Right. Y'all about to get some cray cray. Yeah. Are these World War Z zombies? Yeah. How robust do they look? <laughs> All, uh, you, you, if not for the fact if Felion told you they're undead, like looking from afar, you wouldn't be able to tell they they were zombies. Right. Okay. So their their bodies are fresh. Mm -hmm. Roadies. They're fresh. Okay. Um. Do we find them now? Out in the open and risk. Are we like we're like tucked back in the woods, right? Like we're kind of hidden. Mm. Yeah, you are. Okay. 
Is there a direct line of sight from the house to where we are? Yes. Okay. Um, she's gonna, what do I do? I don't know what I was doing with this. I thought you guys would jump in with some other like big team if I just conjured up a good distraction. Well, listen, they, yeah, they, were, they were waiting on you. <laughs> I was kind of afraid she could look at her and she's like, but she's like a good idea that now what? Anybody else want to try and defeat the six undead Malkite in soul corpses out there? Or is it just going to be me and my fox skeletons? <laughs> so, so here's my question is, like me running over there, literally blowing up the plan of stealth because, like, I can go over there and do some crazy stuff. But like, I don't know what the other group is doing. Like, we have a we have a distraction, right? And so yeah. Now, now, now. So what? Maybe now we try to let's maybe try to sneak past them and get into the house while we can. Mm-hmm. We can totally do that too. Yeah. yeah. Let's have zombie, let's just do let's that. Have a zombie lead them away from tell us says that to the group and that's a great idea. and starts having the zombie walk like away from the house mm-hmm. okay so as the group all at once yeah like separate the group i think it's light i already alerted the other three too But we're not in the woods. Yeah, we are. We're on the edge of the woods. But there's a direct line of sight to the house. Right. Right. Stella's gonna have. I'm gonna use like an arrow. Hold on. Stella's gonna have the, the zombie walk in like this. Oh, where's my arrow thing? Is this it? Where's my arrow thing, Garrett? What are you talking about? I used to be able to. Where's the uh? There we go. In like this direction. So away from the house and also a little bit away from us so that we can have options. <laughs> okay. As he's walking in that direction, um, this cultist is going to cast whole whole person on it. Oh man, is this like a battle of the arcana? Oh my god, you oh my god, you're right. I forgot about that stupid rule. Um, he should. <laughs> I'm going to change what I'm doing then, because that's... You are the DM. You do get to do that. Because I, I, I forgot about that stupid technicality. I feel like that's a dumb technicality, but anyway... Well, okay, I'm not necessarily every enemy, but it's just like a zombie is more humanoid than, say, a dragon. But anyway. In that case, it's going to cast... He's just going to lob what appears to be green fire at the zombie. <laughs> the zombie like, shuffles a little faster. <laughs> like, no, but... <laughs> yeah, right. So he's also going to say, uh, The Sun What Us! And it's going to. So some of the other guys are now going to start coming out. Let's see here. How much damage does he take from that? Does it hurt? Uh, let's see. Make a dex save. My zombie. Yep. <laughs> I wonder what kind of dex he has. What? <laughs> Did it hurt? <laughs> no, but it <laughs> almost <laughs> did. Never? Oh, man. I like how he crit, though, on the second roll. And it was an 18. But anyway, yeah, he takes six damage. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, How much HP does a freaking zombie have? Uh, 22. So 
Okay. Oh, okay. He's still rolling. He's still good. Um, he continues, he turns around and like growls at them and then continues uh, shuffling into the woods. Up to him! And they're gonna... Nice. Shella is like frantically moving the fox going, it's, it's working! <laughs> <laughs> Um, I slowly make my way over there, like sneaking. Okay, I'm just going to move the zombie kind of like so. Are you going to dash again with the zombie? Yeah. Okay. Because I'll, okay, you're you're kind of like, let's say like this, uh, well, no, like this away. Yeah, I think pretty much straight down at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gerber I'm, rolls still. I'm like sneaking behind um, different grave gravestones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. you're fine. <laughs> of course. Um, okay, so these guys are going in the direction. And then I'm going to scoot up and, like, uh, Can you draw it? I'm about to. So tree line would be, like, here. Cool. Tombstones would be, like, Witness my amazing art skills. Like that, I guess. Did the rest of our group kind of mosey our way in that direction? What's happening with the other three? Are they, just uh, they are coming this way as well, just slower. Do you do? Um, Hella looks at Brondir and says, I think I can handle the three up top if you can help the others with these three down here. By yourself? Just the three up top? Um, yeah, and she'll, she drops the fox skeleton and casts. Sorry, I have to make sure my dimensions are right. Dang, that's not a that's not a concentration spell. That's really good. Animate dead anyway. Yeah. Um, she casts wall of fire. Yeah. Oh. In uh, in a ring. Uh, in a ring. I already hit it here. Oh. In a ring around uh the three up top, like nice. sealing them. Within like a ring. Okay, draw. Try and draw with the free hand, kind of what you got. Okay, do. let me get a good fire color. You guys got real lit about wall of fire. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, cool. yeah wall of fire is amazing. <laughs> so it's um, sorry. Are these squares five feet? Yes. Yeah. So um, it's gonna land right on top of one of them. Let me check my radius. <laughs> it just burns one of them alive instantly. Ah! <laughs> so it's Drew, as like, it's happening, what's happening with these three at the bottom? Like, what do they do? As it's like, as she's drawing it, what do they do? So, I would say they're still chasing after this zombie, but well, they're gonna hear these guys scream mm -hmm. and probably stop and look behind them. Okay, the minute they look behind, I'm gonna pound, I'm gonna come out and get behind this one right here. Me too. Yeah. Um, the other one. Yeah. Eat him. And here, and then I'm going Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my Shadow Blade. Oh, you would. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. So mm -hmm. I'm going to cast Shadow Blade, um, and it's going to get used as a... Um, it's a sneak attack, but also a blade. Okay. 
It's a sneak attack and a blade. And a blade. Also. Also, yeah. um, okay, so what's your to hit on that? So my to hit on, because I've been using it as a rapier. Like that's what I've been rolling for previously. Uh huh. Uh huh. So the sneak attack was twenty one. That's a hit. Yeah, and then that it gave me. I don't forgot how we did this exactly, but it has six piercing damage and then eight psychic damage. Nice. So tell me how you kill this guy. Yes. yes. Get him, Gerbo. The planet it's working. It's amazing. <laughs> And I uh, come up behind him with my shadow blade. I cast it and then just slide it into his side and pull it out. Nice. When you do that, and you like when your shadow blade comes out of him, his his body's gonna immediately slump down, mm. and you see what appears to be like a green orb just shoot out of his body and fly towards the manor. Oh no! <laughs> Let's hope souls don't talk without a body. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brondir, I guess. This is a surprise round, basically. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna take the uh, boomstick Actually, well, I don't want to be, be well, I say I don't want to be too loud, but we just created a fire storm. <laughs> There's a ring of fire right here. Oh, oh um, I'm pretty, that, that may have gone out. So I want to take, I'm going to sneak up. I guess, is this an advantage attack, I guess? Um, yeah. So, um, and because I have, okay, so let me do this one first. Okay. A lot of numbers there. Nice. Okay. So, 19 to hit, and then mm -hmm. um, 13 slashing plus 6 thunder plus 3 rage. <laughs> God, there's so many numbers. <laughs> well, okay, so this guy doesn't see you. You've got advantage. He's dead. Describe yeah. your, your kill. Describe your kill. What I want to do is is come in and like I want to say that Gareth and I or Gerbo and I like make eye contact and we do this simultaneously. Oh yeah, cool. Like what I'm going to do though is I'm going to bring up and do an over like and come down like across like back neck like to the under arm thing and yeah. try to like, make a clean cut. But uh -huh. because I have haste, I can then immediately come over here <gasps> and follow oh up. And I have two more attacks now. One for me just having two attacks and one for haste. Wow. That's amazing. That's so OP. And so. Okay. Well, I'll tell you whenever you cut that guy down, the same thing happens. Another green orb flies out of his body and flies back towards the manor. Okay. Um. And I grab a bag and I try to catch the orb. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you. I think it's Minecraft experience. Um, as you're like readying to attack this other cultist. Um, I think this is probably where we'll end this session on currently. Uh. You see what looks like a, and I don't have a picture for him right now. I'll get one for next time. Little tease. Uh -oh. Yeah. You see, as you're about to like lay into this other cultist in front of you. Yeah. Um, you see something like a shadow almost just entered the sky, and he kind of freezes up, and then in a just a few seconds, his body just kind of explodes. Awesome. This is great. And replacing him is you see what appears to be a spirit that is white. And the spirit is currently looking at you. 
cool. So I'm like, I just got guts exploded on me. Yeah. And now I look up and I see this white spirit. And the spirit is actually holding the green orb as, and he's basically, it's trying to fly back to the manor, but he's preventing it. It's like holding it in his hand. And you can see as the green orb, as you can look at it more closely, it almost is like a, like a skull that kind of is like reaching out and biting and trying to chomp away at something, but he kind of grabs it and crushes it into his hands. Interesting. Um, I'm going to like swing gross stuff off my hand and be like, um, so I move my axe and like, who, who are you? Yeah, yeah. Right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is what happens, Ron Deer. This will be how we end the episode, Ron Deer. Oh shit! Oh, it's like, looks like this guy's got the spirit. Annihilated. That's a silly as like only we can see it by intros. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, oh that's there's, there's these three guys burning in a flame. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, that's all good. That was that was a fun debut for that spell. Yeah, that was a good that's spell. Good. Yes, that's okay. that was awesome. It yeah. did completely ruin our initial plan to sneak in completely unnoticed, but maybe it'll be you know, we could they still don't know where we are. So well, they don't, but the spirit right. Yeah. Well, that was going to be a problem no matter how we killed them. So that does actually make me feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we pretty much killed them in like a single round, except for this guy and whatever's about to happen, which mm-hmm. is pretty good for six on four. Technically, he's dead. <laughs> Technically. Technically, yes. they all are. Yeah. Yes. Technically, I'm not sure if it's good or bad. The fact that it crushed a green orb makes me question, so. Is it like trying? Is it trying to destroy the green orb, or is it trying to hold on to it? it no, it, it crushed. It destroyed it. Destroyed. Oh. So it destroyed the guy I was about to destroy, and then destroyed the green orb. Mm-hmm. So the enemy and my enemy is my friend. <laughs> Good for that. Could be. Yeah, we'll find out. A failure. <laughs> really, trust no one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Ron, you trust everyone. This is not good. <laughs> cool, good session. Yeah. Um, Jeff's schedule is pretty chill for the next few weeks. Yeah, I have um, three consecutive weeks of outpatient clinic, like a real human being. Yeah. Oh, wow. So happy. Yeah. Real human, real human hours? <laughs> real human hours, yeah, eight to five. Amazing. Eight to six. But yeah, yeah. No call, okay. well, no overnight call. Yeah. yeah, so whenever, I know we've been kind of alternating weeks. Well, um, yeah, I'm fine even just if we wanted to capitalize, depending on how much group can land, but I am fine with next week. If that's, if that's not doable, then that's fine, but I'm fine with next week. Let's see. So I'll be. The Badlands group has shifted to a two-week schedule. Um, they'll have their se- next session this week, um, but that's fine. I, th- I think I think next week should be fine. Okay. Can you say that again on, the, on March second? Sure. March second is Tuesday. Yeah, mm-hmm. that should be fine. I think. Yeah. I don't think we've. Yeah, like uh, I don't think any, actually I don't think anything else. D and D related falls on a close on close to a Tuesday, so I think we're good. We this yeah. is this is fun. This will be a good yeah, battle. Yeah, for sure. Good battle. Yeah, let's let's plan on it then. And take advantage of Jeff's schedule and yes, um, 
thanks for um yeah thanks for your patience i'm sorry we were we were slow to get our act together tonight well i honestly didn't have everything i wanted prepared prepped anyway so right. good i think where we got was a good especially timeline wise was good for good for us yeah. Um, should, should we shoot for 6.30 again? Yeah, I'll yeah. try to be, um, I'll try to communicate if, if we need to push back, if I need to push back next time. Yeah, just let us know if you need to push back or whatever. Have, whatever. Um, cool. My brain, my brain immediately went to, by the way, my brain went to Johnny Cash when I saw. Bring I down, down, down. <laughs> Burning ring of fire. Burning ring of fire. Burn, burn, burn. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It so is a trumpet solo. Great trumpet solo. Zach, yep. you can open our session next week. Yeah. You can serenade us. Yes. Yeah, like a fun intro. Oh, um. I, I can do it. I got my trumpet around here somewhere. Musical accompaniment. <laughs> the accompaniment. Yes. Love it, love it. Oh, uh, I, 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 one thing I also am going to incorporate more. I, I did end up buying a collection of royalty-free music. Nice. Oh, cool. Yes. So. That's awesome. I can. Bring let's see. Let's see if I can. <laughs> That's amazing. That's cool. Is that coming through Roll20? Yes. That's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Love it. I wasn't no, that at all. That was great. Well, it's got some music for basically any occasion. Like, uh, let me add another one real quick. This is a quiet theme. Yeah, just a little bit of tension. That's right. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's not like bad generic music, which is what I'm thankful for. Um, yeah, not that, that's a good I mean, time. you know, just in case monetization or YouTube decides to remove all copyright strike videos or whatever, but anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that's good, Drew. Yeah. We have it. I feel like that's something we haven't figured out as like a reliable way for us to all hear the same music. I feel like we've done it a few different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It's tough, um, but I think this might be a decent a way to at least incorporate more music in our sessions more yeah. regularly. So yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. It helps so much with like getting a character and story and everything. It does. Oh, yeah. it, pulls it really in. helps. It yes. pulls you in. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Gareth's got to go do some school stuff, but could we talk about like a potion system real quick? I would really. Yeah. Like okay. You can. I was. Uh, I Brett actually linked it. Could you could you link it again, Brett? No, I have it. I have it open. Oh, you got it open. Good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it what? What? Oh, it's you need your laptop. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Let me get back into D and D Beyond and connect my video so that Garrett roll can 20. roll twenty so that Garrett can go do his thing. Um. Here we go. I'm gonna have to connect my video. Anyway, I, yeah, I was reading over it. And that's really cool. I I feel like I feel like the rules for the foraging and crafting and like the skill checks are are super reasonable. Yeah. Um, but it would be fun to expand the potion list, mm. maybe like customize it to Chella and her background a little bit for this set, mm. for this campaign. Definitely. Um, Right, he tried to make it as generic as possible. Whoa! <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was so bad. Ooh. I don't know why my webcam was Sorry. so terrible. There we go. Um, geez. That was so bad, y'all. Okay. Everyone still have two eardrums? Or are we... <laughs>
I, I think I can hear. I think I can. Okay. Okay, cool. So oh, sorry. That was so bad. What were you going to say? I was just saying that Brett made it as generic as possible, so that way it can be kind of used as a template for any game. Oh. Yeah. Right. Now, we can have more, like you said, we can kind of develop potions for Cella, more specifically. And I guess it would be more potions for the setting in general, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we just have to agree on, on the effects and the and the use. Right. Um, these are cool. I will say, 40, how will we keep track of the, the foraging time? Should I just, like, is there a way to create, like, a ticker? I know that at one point, Gerbo was reading for a certain amount of time. I don't know how he kept track of that. Well, yeah, mostly just that, I think, well, tracking time and everything, that mostly comes down to um, when you have free time. Right, but right, how, like, I just think I'm going to... I'm going to forget if I can't keep it in my character sheet, like how much time, because hopefully it's cumulative. Like I don't, we don't have many 40 hour stretches, right? Um, yeah, there's no, it would have to be the notes know. section, I think, where you could what? put it. The studying thing. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Oh, okay. Right, you could put it on your notes. True. Cool. Yeah, that would also be a good way to do it, because unfortunately, well, both partially by design, partially the way it's played out, is that there is no, there's almost no downtime in either campaign. So. But it lets you. It allows you to factor in time while traveling, at least for common items. Um. Mm -hmm. Right, like you can spend time while traveling crafting things. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah, but that seems, but that's like that makes sense if you thought if you were to think about the kind of real world equivalent. You can't be as attentive when you're also trying to move in a. Well, you're not going to cover as much ground if you're just moving in a set direction. So. Um, yeah, I'm fine with all this. Maybe can I, I, I will, I, I solemnly swear to try to make them balanced, but maybe can I like send you some ideas yes. for some potions that would be fun. And you, if you want to tweak like the strength or the effect or if something, if like if something's way too OP, um, then just tell me and it won't hurt my feelings. Yes. Um, that'll be fun. I, I like that idea. Um, just don't make anything like, the immovable rod and we should be fine probably <laughs> no i won't I'll, I'll be reasonable it you know cheat codes take the fun out of any game because so. the immovable rod is probably the most broken item in D. &D what so. is what is that i don't know what that is it's it's a rod that if i recall correctly how does it work like something has to if something's holding it it can't be moved yeah Can hold up to eight thousand pounds of weight. Yes. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. No, I won't. It can't move. That. Yeah, immovable rod. Cool. No, I'll I'll probably I'll make stuff that is focused around like death, decay, spores undead sort of stuff yeah no that makes sense that's good things that her druid circle would specialize in makes sense to me that would be fun yeah because yeah. i've been enjoying what's that
Yeah. And I could like rename them, rename them or like tweak ingredients, but like use those as a skeleton for effects that I might want to use. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Cause it's been really fun, like incorporating the scavenged ingredients into the, into the spells, even if just for flavor text, like it, you guys haven't really helped me to like any kind of strict thing, but I've been looking back through my inventory and like trying to spend those in creative ways. Um, yeah, it just gets you more into character, I guess. So. Definitely. Well, I, I do. I also just like the idea of her, you know, every once in a while scavenging for weird, random, just like, <laughs> just yeah. like guys, I, I need a cor I need an animal corpse. Yeah. <laughs> I need animal bones. Yeah, it's like very Radagast. It, it just, it's a very, a very mm -hmm. druid thing. Like muttering yes. to yourself, like covered in slime. Yeah. Yes, perfect. You grab like a bird's nest uh -huh. out of a tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stick it in my hair. No. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, Zach, congrats on your car, man. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So glad you managed to get it from all of that, but it's pretty exciting to get a car for four thousand dollars. That's it's amazing. It's the use. It it looks like a four thousand dollar car, being that it has a bunch of decals ripped off of it, and it comes with a, a police light bar on top. But yeah. uh, the lights aren't blue, by the way. They're like white, orange, yellow, whatever. But still, I mean, I'm super excited. I feel really very, cool. very thankful for that. So that's awesome. Were you? I, I may have missed part of this earlier when I was settling in. Uh, did something happen to your old car, or were you just? No, I'm just trying to. Um, well, two things, um, three things actually. First is I'm, we're trying to get debt free. So um, by selling my Hummer, I'll be able to get some money out of it not a whole lot but some and um it's getting up in the miles where it's like 160,000 now and uh it's the average 2008 suv where it's um five miles a gallon uh, 15 to 18 yeah 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 and so i'm yeah. driving to litter rock once a month for drill you know that's that adds up and even driving to work because i drive probably six miles seven one way to get to work maybe not that long but you know i can go through a full tank of gas in two weeks of just driving back and forth oh bit. that's wild man we filled up gareth's prius like once every other month or something you'll love having a hybrid oh yeah so i'm, I'm excited about it. so and then dad is wanting to buy the hummer from me and oh. um pull it behind the rv so it works out perfectly so oh. That's nice. So he's going to pay Blue Book value, which is like $7,000, $8,000. Oh, wow. Month. So you'll recover the cost of your car and or your Hummer, yeah. uh, pay for the car, and then have some left over. That's and great. He, the Hummer was something my grandma bought me before she passed away. And so, oh. like, so the sentiment behind that, but also that Hummers are just really cool cars like to look at and to ride in and they're also really yeah. well built and so they're a gm so you can work on them so it's a good car to have whether you're a collector or whether you're a sentiment so um and or if you just want a decent car that's not a, very old so so yeah i'm glad to keep the hummer in the family rather than give it to a high school kid and um <laughs> uh, and then get a car that'll work for us for who knows how long and so then save up and pay cash for a car one day. That's really cool. That's really cool. Or pay pay enough cash that you can get zero percent APR. Yeah. That's yeah. what that's what Gareth and I did on his Subaru. Yeah. Cool. That's really great. That's really great. I'm happy for you guys. And so yeah. And then Sydney's birthday's tomorrow. Oh, I'm glad oh. you said something. I'm off social media so I don't get notifications anymore. Yeah, so her birthday's tomorrow. She's she'll be twenty nine, wow. um, and this is how much I love her. Is that a friend offered me tickets to the Arkansas Alabama game tomorrow night, and Alabama is like ranked super high in the AP poll. This is a very big game. It's gonna be crazy, but I'm staying with my wife, and I'm not gonna watch the game. 
No, I'm not even that. gonna watch the game. I can tell that was that's really hard for you, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> so, and so Good so sacrifice. Well, but like this is like such an investment in my life as well. And so I have this love <laughs> for back that goes back like twenty eight years before I met Sydney. <laughs> and so it's like oh I love you so much, I will just check the score when it's over. And, <laughs> there you go. Um, are you guys gonna do like a nice dinner at home, or are you gonna go out? Or she she went well. She, we're gonna do catfish hole because she loves that. But then she did eat my catfish and fry it. So um, I don't know what we'll do. There's a new place called Feed and Folly. That's, yes, they have a really cool rooftop. Yeah, so we might try that, especially if it's this weather. Holy cow! It's yeah. A- our friends Matt and Stephanie love Feed and Folly. We were going to go there with them last time, but ended up going to another really cool place up in um, up in Bentonville that has like a food truck yard and uh, um, this really cool like it's closed. Here it's just oh, it's winter. Can you, can you be working? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Um, there's all kinds of great places in Fayetteville. We'll so probably do that, and then. I've got her presents all lined out and everything, so. It's sweet. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'm, I'm excited for it. So, last year, I thought her birthday was two days early. So. Oops. <laughs> hey. Well, she made, like, a big good. celebrating on the weekend, and so I thought it was that weekend. Like, she made a very, very big deal about celebrating it on a Saturday, and so, like, I made a birthday post on Saturday, and was like, you know, her birthday is not until Monday, right? I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, of course <laughs> I do. I was listen. gonna do a post every day until her birthday. There you go. Yeah. I'm sorry though, I got it early rather than late. So 364 days until my wife's next birthday. <laughs> 363 days until my wife's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Zach. Oh, so, yeah. Get it right. That's funny. Yeah, social security number and phone number memorized now, so that's good. Oh, I don't have Gareth's social memorized, and we've been married for um, almost six years. So yeah. good on you. Got that. So anyway, it'll be fun. So she'll be glad to hear from y'all if you send her some love. Absolutely. Yeah. Will do. All right, folks. I think I'm gonna. I miss you guys. See you next week. Miss you too. See you in a week. See you guys. Bye.